So how's it going guys, it's Jarmica, and we are back to another episode of Sacrospace. So last time, we basically received an, a message from Akane, and she basically told us to get ready, while she was just lying down on the floor, and getting ready to like take a nap or something. So let's keep on going and see what happens next. The meeting room seems to be the place where I can collect my thoughts. Another cheap cup of coffee helps too. As I take a deep sip from the cup, the caffeine seems to go through the cloud around my mind. There is so much to consider. So much that I have to plan for. The hours seem to be passing slowly as my thoughts swirl through my head. Here I am, just waiting for something to happen. The anticipation in the air could be cut with a knife. Captain, will you, will you be getting anywhere soon? As a reminder, I did suggest to you this to you hours ago. You have not had any rest since then. Akane still- Akane has to- Akane has- Akane still has some time before she fully recovers from her stun round. I really do get tired of the AI playing as my nanny. I know, I know. But you just- But just because she isn't fully mobile doesn't mean she isn't a threat. When we first met her, she just- She deployed a small army of attack drones. I don't know where she got them from, but I can't rule out her using drones or robots to soften our defenses first. Or maybe she will use the fainted as shafts again. It is possible for you to use that, correct? But, but I can alert you as soon as something unusual happens. Your optimal heart is my priority, Captain. Just leave me to my thoughts for a moment. Archer Wash. The AI goes silent again. I wrap the sleep out of my eyes, trying to my best to stay alert. Maybe it's alright. If I'm going to be dead tired by the time I kinda finally makes a move, then what's the point? Surely she's going to need she, surely she's going to need to sleep at some time as well. Then again, she's not from around here. Her body clock is probably adjusted to an entirely different schedule to mine. I pull up my digital pad, getting ready to put down some notes. Thoughts. There are a number of techniques that Akane could employ to trick or disable our AI. She could cut her power. It would take a few seconds for the emergency power to come online, which would be plenty of time for her to slip in. Motion sensors, cameras, heat sensors. She isn't stupid. She would find a way to avoid all of these things. The ventilation system is also not a place she could strike from, despite additional security measures. But I, gu but I guess I won't know what she's going to do unless she does it. That is the most frustrating thing about all of this. Perhaps it would be better to take some time to rest and get my wits back. I am going to be a nervous wreck if I keep doing this to myself. And what good would a, would a nervous wreck be by the time I kind of make some move? Captain, there appears to be an intruder in Nami's room. Akane! With no hesitation, I immediately bolt out of the room. Bypass the security protocols on the door. I need to get in there. Acknowledged. Nami, what is... Whoa, that is definitely something, especially the squishing parts. Oh, I'm, I'm not really sure what I should just dump it into. Kalari stands there, locking his lips with her. For a little while, everything seems to go deadly quiet. Nami starts out with our white bitch shock, the sheer surprise plainly visible on her face. Katari pulls back. Your lips are so soft, Nami. Uh, are they? Yep, I could kiss you all day. And maybe even a little longer than that. Katari glances at me, recognizing my presence. Nice to see you, Captain. What are you doing here? The AI said there's an intruder in Nami's room. Yep, I sneaked in here. I said I would extract my prize after all. Don't think you're going to get away with making me hold the camera, Nami. K Katari, this this isn't a good a good time. Re really, not a good time. What about what about Akane? Despite this uh, entire absurd scene, there is something strangely cute about Nami when she's acting like this. Usually so cool and focused, she seems to become a, like an awkward teenage girl. Stop being so shy. I'm not here to judge. You're just so cute, Nami. You, you too. 
Now Miss Hackerness is at to speak. She just stands there unsure what she should do. Yet she doesn't make any move to stop Katori. Katori's arm is slightly tightly wound around her waist, making sure she, that she could, can't get away from her lips. The captain already paid the price, so now you have to as well. Capitalization again. Katori redox lips with her eagerly. They stayed that way for the longest time, with Katori not letting Naomi get away. Naomi pulls away from Katori's lips with considerable effort. You're you're making the captain worry, Katori. Can can we do this later? Oh, so you are so you're admitting that you like you would like to do this. I'm so lucky. We're going to have so much fun together, Naomi. Yes, we will have fun. That's right. Katori gives her one small peck on the cheek. Now then, you have paid your debt. For now. I better get to I better get to have a fight with Akane or I'm going to get both of you. Next time, don't sneak into the Nami's room when we're on high alert. God Captain. Satisfied, Katori leaves Nami's bedroom. After Nami gets her suit back on, she just awkwardly sits on her bed. It's it's embarrassing to be seen like that. Not a good time. Not a good time at all. Then let's just pretend I didn't see that. That would be the best, in all honesty. Honestly, I got an alert that there was an intruder in your room. But I couldn't have known it would be Katori. I didn't know what was happening. Naomi, please pull yourself together. Uh, Alright, I'm sorry. I just need a moment. She regains a bit of composure. If there's another alert like that in any room, we shouldn't ignore it. I kind of could potentially ignore it, exploit it. Yes, you're right. Nami touches her lips. Ay. She just gets a flush expression on her face again. I just shake my head. I think that you're going to have to overcome your awkwardness one day, Nami. I might not always be around to do all of the talking for you when it needs to be done. You know me, Captain. She, she slowly throws one finger down the window next to her bed. I, I enjoy my time alone. My alone time. When it's not about work. I just can't focus. She, she is just so painfully shy. The polar opposite of Katori. How does Katori have so much confidence, Captain? She she knew we were on high alert, and yet she she still It's like what you said. It's just how she is. I know that, that it's hard to deal with, but you would just have to accept, accept it one day. Besides, there's a certain charm to your awkwardness, Nami. Do you really think so? I... I don't really see, logically speaking, how it would... She starts stammering. I'm surprised at how cute she is when she acts like this. It's alright, you know. Take a deep breath. It does so, calming herself down. Down a bit. Right. My apologies, Captain. I lost my composure there. Well, considering that Gotori just invited herself into your room, that would take anyone by surprise. Yes, it would. Captain? Yes, Nami? Let's change the topic. I've been looking forward to into our bounty. What do you mean? What I mean is that I have been trying to figure out who exactly plays this bounty in the first place. With what available evidence we have, I have not seen anything which warrants her having a place like this on her head. Not to mention that the bounty specifically requested that she be brought in alive. What do you make of that exactly? It's hard to say, Nami. There are a number of reasons why. Maybe it is someone with a grudge. Maybe she is important. I'm gonna say it first. So I think the first option is basically like, if you have a grudge, you would either want them alive or dead, but important. Yeah, I think that also works. I think it's just like, what do you think? I guess important you would want them alive, I would say. For me, it's like, alive, or death. Or, or like, both options basically, but this one's possibly alive, so I'll just go with this. The pentagram she has conducted doesn't warrant having such a high bounty. So I can only imagine that she is someone important to the person setting the bounty. Important to them? In what way? I do not know, but whoever they are, they seem not to care about how much money they have to spread to bring her to them. 
there could be other motives, but none of them seem fitting, fitting for this. We have seen that she has access to incredible resources, so I can only imagine that she has will to burn as well. So you think that whoever placed the bounty is a benefactor of hers? Or something along those lines? Potentially. They value her enough to place the largest bounty ever in this galaxy. And with what and with that much wealth, you would be sure they be in a position of power. So maybe she is a runaway or something like that. It does seem to add up. A wealthy board member of one rich family or another. Nami nods. While we cannot confirm it right now, I think we might be, be on to something. Despite how much trouble she has been causing us, I do want to find out the reason behind all of this. Katara would probably be more interested in the one being than the mystery though. We will cross that bridge when we get to it. For now, our main concern should be what we should do when she finally attacks. Of course. Can we talk later, Captain? As you wish. Please inform me if you see anything unusual. I will, Captain. So it was just a false alarm. Although I question Katari's timing, I'm relieved that it wasn't an attack. You're always you're always at your most vulnerable in familiar settings. I don't know if Nami keeps her weapons in a room. This also means our AI is vigilant enough to be able to detect any unusual movement. Perhaps I can rely on it for now. Akana still has time before she recovers, so that also gives me some time to relax. Back to brooding by myself, I suppose. The hours continue to drag along. No matter how much I glance at the clock, they, not, they do not seem to move any faster. They see a watch kettle never boils. Yeah, I guess I think there is some merit to that. Like, if you just keep staring at it, like you won't notice. Like, it's not gonna do anything until you look away and then like, it's gone. I'm inclined to believe it. Now then, I need to start thinking through my, through my plans. When I can attacks, I need to be prepared. Just sitting here and waiting for something to happen isn't the correct way to approach it at all. First, I need to do at first, I need to determine at what possible point she could strike from. The most obvious place would be the front door. But because it's the most obvious place, she would strike from... Where would she choose that? I better not linger on that for too long. Second is the ventilation system. Not without this hazards, we could easily trap that where the fence intersect. The only drone she could stand through, it would be fairly small. Even for someone as that kind of slim frame, it would be too hard for her to ski through. She has a good idea of what I'm doing, so I think I would trap the defense anyway. The maintenance steps are also going to be a problem. She could easily launch an attack from there. I hope that engineer we spoke to has raised some complaints. I might have to contact him later and ensure that nothing unusual has happened around there lately. But how can I contact him? We can't really leave her quarters right now. Well, that must mean that the maintenance steps are going to be her ideal way to attack. But where, where else could she come from? There is only one other place she could attack from. The outside of the ship. We have some windows that she could go through. At the same time, I have to remember that she's not trying to kill us. Doing something that would potentially endanger us like that would be going too far, even for her. At the same time, I need to keep it in mind as a possibility. If I overlook any details and endanger my crew, what right do I have to be as a captain? Now then, I will position drones here, here, and here. Stun rounds versus organic targets, EMP rounds for inorganic targets. I will set up some scuttlebots to I will set up some scuttlebots to patrol the fence and ensure that there isn't anything unusual. And the final strike to our defenses will be my secret weapon. A mod on my pistol that which not even Katori or Nami know about. It's bound to take a tiny by surprise. I'm sure of it. Maybe I should head over to the simulation room and see if it's not being used. When I enter the room, I find that it's empty. Katari and Nami must be in their rooms right now. That's fine by me. I need some practice. Simulate firing range. Before you simulate anything, Captain, might I make a might I make a suggestion? Go on. I feel that I've collected enough footage of Kana to do a simulation of her. It will only be a rough estimate. But it would probably be a good way to prepare yourself for our attack. Could you play that footage back to me? Simulate a 3D image of it. 
acknowledged. The footage plays out before me. Akane moves incredibly fast. That's the first and obvious thing about her. Slow it down? As the footage slows down, I can get an impression of how Akane moves. I see, I see. Using search for the church rear, and a few security cameras of her on those planets, I believe I can create a digital simulation of her. Why don't you show me? Sure enough, a digital copy of Akane appears before me. A quality stands to rigid attention, waiting for the next input. Despite myself, I am disturbed by its silence. I suppose I am too used to hearing Akane constantly whenever she shows her face. Pistol configuration is done. Begin combat simulation. Before I can even blink, the simulation bolts at me. I don't have a few shots, but nimbly it fades them. With her closing the distance so quickly, I have no choice but to retreat backward. Firing over my shoulder, I make sure not to stop moving. Her rib is insanely fast. Much to my dismay, I feel something wrap around my leg. My simulation the simulation stops then and returns to its rigid stance. Simulation over. You did not manage to land any hits on her. You shock. As I thought, Akane is the worst possible opponent for me. My main advantage is my pistol, so range. With that, I can usually put a significant distance between me and my opponents. But Akane has significantly less distance she has to close if she wants to snare me with her whip. I'm sure that if she she's going to single out anyone out, it's going to be me next. She said I'm as much when we last met, so I need to think of a solution to this. What can I do to stop her from getting within her ideal range? Perhaps I should try out the secret in configuration. Alright, we're gonna end it here guys. So I hope you guys like this video, leave a like, leave a comment, and I hope you should subscribe for more videos like this, and I hope to see you guys in the future. So, bye bye